One of the most common conditions that I see in my clinical practice is called spondylolisthesis. Spondylolisthesis simply means that two vertebrae in the spine have slipped over each other and this can cause low back pain radiating into the legs. Here's a diagram of a normal lumbar spine, the lower back. You can see that the bones or vertebrae are lined up perfectly over each other. When I draw a straight line at the back of the L4 vertebrae, it matches up very nicely with another line drawn at the back of the L5 vertebrae, like this. On the other hand, here is what a spondylolisthesis looks like. The L4 vertebrae has slipped over the L5 vertebrae. Let me show you how. When I draw a line at the back of the L4 vertebrae, it does not match up with another line drawn at the back of the L5 vertebrae. This slippage is called spondylolisthesis. The most common reason why spondylolisthesis happens is because the disc between the two bones becomes degenerated. As a result, the mechanical forces between the two bones become abnormal, eventually leading to an instability. As time goes on, the joint between L4 and L5 vertebrae, called the facet joint, develops bone spurs, what we commonly call arthritis. The arthritis keeps growing more and more over time and can eventually start compressing the spinal nerves like this. This compression of the spinal nerves is called spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis can cause back pain which radiates into the leg. This condition is called radiculopathy. I have a great video about radiculopathy. Link is in the description below. You can check it out if you'd like. Here is an MRI of the lumbar spine of a patient with spondylolisthesis. This is a view of the spine from the side. To get you oriented, here is the front and here is the back of the patient. I'm going to outline the bones or the vertebrae of the spine in yellow. You can see that there is a subtle slippage of L4 vertebrae over L5. Between the bones are the discs, which are like small rounded cushions outlined in blue. You can see that the disc between L4 and L5 vertebrae appears degenerated and misshapen. Because this disc is degenerating and is not providing adequate stability or support, the result is a slippage of L4 over L5 vertebrae. Behind the bones and the discs is a long tube outlined in pink called the spinal canal. The spinal canal is full of spinal fluid which appears white on MRI. The spinal fluid is produced by the brain and it circulates throughout the spine. Within the spinal fluid you can see the spinal cord and the nerves highlighted in yellow. At a normal level, for example between L3 and L4, the spinal canal is wide open and the nerves can pass through this level easily. On the other hand, at the L4, L5 level, the spinal canal has become very tight because of the spondylolisthesis, and this is causing spinal stenosis. This patient's symptoms did not improve despite non-operative treatment, so they chose to proceed with surgical treatment. I performed a L4, L5 laminectomy fusion surgery. Laminectomy means removing the bone spurs and freeing up the spinal nerves. I'm outlining the laminectomy area in yellow. Fusion means stabilizing the L4 and L5 bones by placing rods and screws to hold them together. I also placed bone graft just outside of the rods and screws so that the two bones could heal together. This healing takes somewhere between 6 months to a year. This patient did really well after the surgery. The low back pain and the nerve pain resolved rapidly and the patient was very pleased with their outcome. This is why lumbar laminectomy infusion is one of my favorite surgeries. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to my channel so I can keep making these educational videos for you. If you have any questions, please share in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.